This video will describe the clinical recommendations for the use of prothrombin complex concentrates or PCCs. PCCs are faster and more effective at lowering the INR than plasma for patients requiring warfarin reversal. We will describe the use of PCCs for warfarin reversal or vitamin K deficiency in patients experiencing major bleeding or requiring emergency surgery in the next six hours. We will also describe why plasma is not the preferred strategy. We hope that this video will give you a thorough understanding of when and how PCC should be used. Prothrombin complex concentrates contains coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. These are the factors that are affected by warfarin therapy or vitamin K deficiency. Each 20 ml vial of PCC contains 500 IU of coagulation factors. Depending on the patient's INR, the typical adult dose is 1,000 to 3,000 IU, or 2 to 6 vials. We will use the dosing recommendations as specified by the National Advisory Committee. The NAC guidelines recommend 1,000 IU if the INR is between 1.5 and 3, 2,000 IU if the INR is between 3 and 5, and 3,000 IU if the INR is greater than 5. Alternative dosing strategies may be weight and INR based. In the setting of life-threatening bleeding, such as an intracranial hemorrhage, a dose of 2,000 IU is given when the INR result is pending to ensure reversal is not delayed. Warfarin is commonly prescribed in a number of conditions, including atrial fibrillation. It is estimated that 1 in 15 Canadians over 65 is living with atrial fibrillation. Although warfarin is an effective therapy, it is associated with a 2% per year risk of major bleeding. Ensuring the appropriate use of PCCs will result in better outcomes for patients requiring urgent reversal of warfarin. PCC contains the exact factors and proteins needed for the immediate reversal of a warfarin-related hemorrhage with 25 times less volume than plasma. In addition, plasma is not as effective in reversing INR levels. PCC results in a faster INR reversal and has a quicker infusion time. It is also more quickly prepared because it does not require blood grouping of the patient or thawing and labeling of the plasma units. PCCs is a lower risk option than plasma because of a reduced risk of transfusion associated circulatory overload or TACO and transfusion related acute lung injury or trolley. Adverse side effects such as arterial or venous thromboembolism or anaphylaxis are uncommon with PCCs and not known to be higher than with plasma. In clinical studies where patients are reversed for major bleeding, approximately 2-4% to of patients develop thromboembolic complications when treated with either PCCs or plasma. PCCs are contraindicated in patients with a history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia because the product contains a trace amount of heparin. Since 2008, the NAC guidelines have recommended PCC for emergency reversal of warfarin in patients experiencing a life-threatening bleed or needing urgent surgical procedures within the next six hours. A typical patient for whom PCCs would be indicated would be someone experiencing an intracranial hemorrhage or a major GI bleed. Let's take a look at the following case study. Mrs. Jones is a 74-year-old female who presents to the emergency department with a head injury and multiple fractures after a motor vehicle crash. It's noted that she's in atrial fibrillation and that she has a decreased level of awareness. The CT scan of the head shows a moderate subdural hematoma and it's also noted that she's suffering from a femur fracture. Initial laboratory tests reveal a hemoglobin of 108, an INR of 3.9, and a PTT of 41 seconds. It's determined that she needs to go straight to the OR for emergency evacuation of her subdural hematoma. As there's no medication history available, it's presumed that she's on warfarin for her atrial fibrillation. She receives 10 milligrams of IV vitamin K over 15 minutes and then 2,000 international units of PCC over 10 minutes. Immediately after the PCCs are given, Mrs. Jones is taken directly to the OR. 10 minutes after the PCCs are given, her INR is only 1.3. In another case, we meet Mrs. Lee, a 61-year-old female. She's on warfarin for a previous DVT. However, she's been recently started on ciprofloxacin for a UTI. Previous INRs were stable with no major bleeding problems. She presents to the ED with a three-hour history of progressive headache, vomiting, drowsiness, and disorientation. The triage nurse draws the blood work, including an INR. An emergency CT scan of the head shows an intracranial hemorrhage. 
10 milligrams of vitamin K is given, as well as 2,000 international units of PCC without waiting for the INR result. The INR must be drawn immediately after PCCs are given, as was done in this case. Now occasionally, repeat doses of PCC may be required if the patient has not reached their INR target and the patient has ongoing bleeding. Canadian demographic trends show that as our population ages, instances requiring emergency reversal of anticoagulants will rise. It is important that we ensure optimal outcomes for patients by the appropriate use of blood products. We hope that we have provided you with information on when and how to use PCCs appropriately for the urgent reversal of warfarin therapy and vitamin K deficiency. Thank you for watching this video.